I'm Mike Vicaro, the radio voice of the Seahawks. It's great to be here once again with you guys. Um, a lot of special folks here, not only the athletes and the coaches, but some administrators as well. And a special welcome to anybody on the Athletic Council, the Seahawk and Board of Trustees in attendance, or any other uh, university administrators. Welcome. It's great to have you here with us here tonight. As a reminder, tonight's bank will be uh, all over UNCW's social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Members of our athletic communication staff will be live tweeting tonight at UNCW Athletics. We'll be using the hashtag WingsUp2017 Awards. So please use that hashtag on your tweets and join in the conversation here tonight. To get things started, let's take a look back at a great year here, a video salute of the Seahawks of 2016 and 17. Let's come along as we recap a great season for Seahawk Athletics. Legendary Paul Bear Bryant once said, It's not the will to win that matters. Everyone has that. It's the will to prepare to win that matters. The hours of preparation in the gym, on the court, on the field, in the pool, that's what sets apart the winners from the losers. Your mindset gives way for your performance. Being a Seahawk means being committed. Being a Seahawk means persevering when times get tough. Being a Seahawk means putting your best foot forward for your brothers and your sisters. It means you put in the hours needed to be successful because we expect nothing less. We are Seahawk Nation.
Roll up every 15 minutes like a bus stop. And you can smell this how I'm smoking when I burn out. And you can catch me riding dirty with my car not. It's about the loyalty into my heart lock. Never turn your back, won't know why I turn out. I said it once, I'll do it again. I'm playing the game, I do it to win. With you and your friend, that's thinking then it's me and my team. You know we gon' win, you know we gon' ball, you know we gon' rise to the wheels, fall off. You know we gon' stick to the goal, we can't think about y'all. I feel like the sky is falling down. Ain't nobody here to play around. Push it to the edge, I walk back down. Cause it's time to go on and go on. One way up, no way out. Give it all, all for the family. We stay up, no bailouts. Give it all, all for the family. Hey, hey, hey. For the family. screams out, you're screaming your name, hope if everybody runs, you choose to stay, hope that you fall in love, and it hurts so bad. Say. Ah, 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 ah,
Great job. You saw them in the video. Will all of our uh, seniors please stand and be recognized? Graduating seniors, please stand. Thank you. Great job, everybody. That was some good talent in there as well. Great job. And a great job with the video as well. Megan Black, James Fowler, Bronson Hope. Great job of the uh, Com Media production. Would you guys please stand? Great job with that video. And special thanks as well to Dr. Bill Bolduc for his guidance on this project as well. At this time, I'd like to call on Lauren Moore, Student Athlete Advisory Committee President, to begin our awards presentations. Lauren? Good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the person who sends you those really annoying emails every week um, about anything and everything to do with athletics. So now you know who I am. On behalf of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, I'd like to thank all the student athletes, coaches, and athletic department for your dedication and community service efforts this year. Last year, we began an ongoing community service project called Hotels for the Homeless. Athletes are encouraged to collect the complimentary bottles of shampoo and conditioner from hotels at away competitions so we can donate them to the Good Shepherd House. Last year, we collected and donated just over 1,000 bottles. This year, with still one month to go, we have collected 2,494 bottles. <laughs> this wasn't the only area we improved on. Every year since 2013, the CAA has a conference-wide competition to see which school can collect the most food by hosting a week-long canned food drive. Last year, we only collected a mere 20 pounds of food. This year, I'm proud to say we crushed that number and collected 379 pounds of food. <laughs> Needless to say, it's been a great year for athletics, not only on the field or the court, but also in the community. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the new SAC board for next year. Spirit and Pride Committee Chair, Rachel McCormick. <laughs> Community Service Committee Chair, Liberty Anderson. <laughs> Event Coordination Committee Chair, Braden Smith. <laughs> Parliamentarian, Blair Pierce. Public Relations, Mo Holmes and Mason Trivet. <laughs> Treasurer, Elena Yeats. <laughs> Secretary, Alexis Dickerson. <laughs> Vice President, Ryan Fowler. Lastly, I'd like to introduce to you the new Student Athlete Advisory Committee President. This athlete is a leader on the court and off the court. Not only is she a hard worker, but she's dedicated to everything she does. She's been instrumental in SAC this year, and I can't wait to see what she does when she takes it over. I'm proud to pass down the SAC President gavel to Sydney Brock. Every year, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee gives one team the Spirit and Pride Award. This award is given to the team that is most supportive of other teams and has a large impact on the surrounding community. This year's recipient was present at over half the Code Teal events and has completed over 2,000 hours in the community. Congratulations, softball, on winning this year's SAC Spirit and Pride Award.
right, last award, and I promise I'll get off the stage. At this point, I'd like to give out the Pat Howey Outstanding Leadership Award. This award is named for former SWA and Deputy Athletic Director Pat Howey, who could not be with us tonight after recovering from a recent surgery. This award is given to an athlete who demonstrates leadership, integrity, courage, and dedication within their sport. The student athlete chosen for tonight embodies everything this award stands for. Most student athletes get to determine the length of their collegiate career for themselves. If they work hard in the pool, on the field, or on the court, they're rewarded with success. However, most student athletes don't undergo open heart surgery in the middle of their career. This student athlete was doing everything right during her freshman year. She worked hard in the pool, and because of that, she was successful at her first conference championship. She finished fifth in the 100 breaststroke and 12th in the 200 breaststroke. A huge accomplishment for any swimmer, especially a freshman. By all accounts, her actions and determination would have set any student athlete up for four years of success in the pool and in the classroom. But this student athlete is not your typical student athlete. After about a week into her sophomore season, she was given news that her swimming career must come to an end. At a regular checkup doctor's appointment, she was told about a heart condition that would require open heart surgery within the next two years if she wanted to live a normal life in the future. Immediately, this athlete was forced to stop all activities, including swimming. This was hard for not only her, but her coaches and teammates because of what a great person and talented athlete she was. Even though she could not swim for the next year and a half, she remained involved in the swim program. She supported her teammates on the deck and helped the coaches with work in the office. She became involved in the community with the Big Buddy program by spending quality time with underprivileged youth. December of 2015 came along, and it was time to take the leap to fix her condition. This student athlete underwent surgery at the Mayo Clinic to replace her heart valve with a cow valve. After a successful surgery and long months of recovery, her doctors gave her clearance to attempt to swim again. Her coaches and teammates welcomed her back with open arms. Entering her senior year, her only goal was to just swim again. Her coaches supported this goal and knew it would be a mighty challenge. After all, she couldn't even carry her backpack across campus a few months prior. She persevered and achieved more than anyone could ever have anticipated. She captained her teammates to a successful season and she brought her career full circle swimming her way back into the top eight in the conference in 100 breaststroke. Her determination, positive attitude, and courage did not go unnoticed. The Seahawk family is very proud to announce that this year's Pat Howey Award goes to Katherine Ostrom of the Women's Swim and Dive Team. Congratulations. As we start the individual awards for each team, would the winners please come forward to receive your awards from your respective head coaches. Following each presentation, the recipients and their head coach should proceed to the front lobby to pose for a photograph. Following the banquet, seniors will receive men's and women's Bolivar watches from their head coaches, the watches donated from Reed's Jewelers and their president, Alan Zimmer. Our first team is volleyball. Head coach Amy Bambanak in her eighth season. Associate head coach David Fisher, assistant coaches Megan Sherman and Kristen Boyd. Seahawks posted a 17-11 record. Senior Nicole Lott was named first team all CAA for the second consecutive season. And Kendall Bender and Anna Moss was named to the all-rookie and all-academic teams. Lott concluded her indoor career ranked fourth in kills at UNCW with 1,242 and 10th in digs with 1,036. The team defeated NC State and swept the regular season series versus the College of Charleston, both program first. And the following award winners, please come forward. Offensive Player of the Year Award, Nicole Lott. <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year Award, Sydney Alvis. and the inspiring Seahawk Award, Sarah Kelly.
Congratulations. Now, last year we introduced a new feature for the banquet. It was a big hit. With the help of SAC, we'll be showcasing different individuals and their unique talents. Our first student athlete spotlight features the most likely to become a UNCW coach. You mean Terrence isn't a coach already? All right. Beach Volleyball, head coach Amy Bambanek in her second season. Associate head coach David Fisher and assistant coach Brittany Fennell. The team stands 11 and seven after competing in the JU Pairs Tournament last weekend. Seahawks hosted the UNCW Beach Flash Tournament two weeks ago at Dig and Dive. They beat nationally ranked North Florida, the program's first win over a ranked team. Seahawks also received votes from the AVCA for the top 15 poll. Beach Volleyball is competing there later this month in the Coastal Collegiate Sports Association's Conference Tournament in Atlanta. And the team of Sydney Alvis and Sarah Kelly are a team best 16 and five on the season. Beach Volleyball will present their awards later uh, this season. Women's Soccer, head coach Paul Kearney in his 21st season. Assistant coaches Megan Novak, Justin Bryan and Steve Elliott. The Seahawks fashioned a 10, 5, and 4 record and earned the number four seed in the CA championships. UNCW hosted William and Mary in the quarterfinals and battled the tribe to a 2 2 tie before falling in the penalty kick shootout. Seahawks finished the season with 107 points, the sixth highest total in program history. Junior forward Serenity Waters and senior midfielder Moa Yarrow received second team all CA honors while senior defender Madison Melnick garnered third team distinction. Freshman defender Ashley Johnson earned a spot on the CA All-Rookie team, while senior midfielder Kennedy Ulrich was named as the Seahawks representative on the CA All-Academic team. Senior goalkeeper Carolyn Huddy joined Moa Yarrow, Madison Melnick, and Serenity Waters on the All-State first team. Madison Melnick was named as the third team selection on the NSCAA All-Mid-Atlantic Region team. The Seahawks received the NSCAA Team Academic Award for the 2015-16 academic year, marking the 15th consecutive season they've been recognized. Carolyn Huddy finished her career as the Seahawks all-time leader with 18 career shutouts. And Paul Kearney earned his 200th career victory in the Seahawks 2-0 win at Campbell on August 31st. Congratulations. Will the following award winners please come forward? Most Improved Player Award, Meg Salvadori. And also the Most Improved Player Award, Ashley Johnson. Seahawk Award, Kenny Ulrich. And Most Valuable Player Award, Moa Yarl. Congratulations. Our second SAC Student Athlete Spotlight features most likely to have a reality TV show. You guys are getting crowns as well. They'll be going around as uh, we announce these winners. Now men's soccer. Head coach Aiden Heaney in his 16th season, associate head coach Zach Haynes, and assistant coach Taylor Clark. The Seahawks, who posted an 8-6-3 record, made their fifth consecutive appearance in the CA Championships after reaching the quarterfinals. UNCW hosted its first CA tournament contest since 2009 as the Seahawks welcomed Charleston in the quarterfinals. Redshirt junior forward Julio Mancata headlined a group of six all-CA selections after earning first team all CAA honors. Mankata also received second team all Mid Midwest region notice by the NSCAA 
and was a first team All-State recipient by the NCCSIA. Redshirt sophomore goalkeeper Ryan Cretans, sophomore midfielder Joel Bylander, and freshman Mark Lindstrom received spots on the All-CA second team, while sophomore defender Huntley Munn was a third team All-CAA selection. Mark Lindstrom joined freshman midfielder Philip Goodrum on the CA's All-Rookie team. Joe Bylander and Mark Lindstrom were named first team All-State and Ryan Cretans received second team All-State distinction. Julio Mancata was named as the NCAA Division I Men's Soccer Player of the Week and earned a spot on the Top Drawer Soccer.com National Team of the Week after scoring two goals to lead UNCW past Hofstra 3-1 on October 15th. Mancata also a two-time selection as the CA's Player of the Week. The Seahawks received the NSCAA Team Academic Award for the 2015-16 year, marking the sixth time in the last seven years earning the honor. The team was ranked 13th in the top drawer soccer national rankings in late September. Will the following award winners please come forward? Newcomer of the year, Mark Lindstrom. <laughs> and the men's soccer player of the year, Julio Mancata. Another award for men's soccer is the Johnny Miller Memorial Award. In honor of former UNCW player Johnny Miller, this award is presented to the men's soccer player who displays the most desire and dedication to succeed. This year's winner, Gary O'Neill. Again, men's soccer. Our third SAC student athlete spotlight features most likely to go pro. <laughs> Women's swimming and diving. Head coach Jason Meemont in his third season, Bo Gunn, and assistant coaches Kerry McLernan and Valtteri Hallinan. Addison Lowe qualified for the NCAA Zone B Regionals. Megan Johnson was the CAA Silver Medalist in the Women's 200 Butterfly. Kira Schimmel, Megan Lahr, Megan Johnson, and Annie Shirt set a school record in the 800 Freestyle Relay, and Megan Johnson set a school record in the 200 Butterfly. Will the following award winners please come forward? Most Improved Swimmer Award, Annie Shirt. Seahawk Award, Katherine Ostrom. <laughs> Outstanding Diver, Addison Lowe. And Outstanding Swimmer, Megan Johnson. Once again, women swimming and diving. <laughs> Men swimming and diving. Again, head coach Jason Meemont, head diving coach Bo uh, Bunn, assistant coaches Kiri McLaren and Valtteri Hallinan. Diver Alan Crosby qualified for the NCAA Zone B Regionals. Senior Tad Spence was the CA champion in the men's 100 backstroke. Alan Crosby was the gold medalist in the men's one-meter diving competition and was named CA Co-Diver of the Year. And the following award winner has come forward. Dan Gallagher Most Improved Swimmer Award, Ben Witte. <laughs> Seahawk Award, Alex Rail. <laughs> Dean Berman Outstanding Diver Award, Alan Crosby. and the Sam O'Leary Outstanding Swimmer Award, Tad Spence. <laughs> Men swimming and diving. Oh, one more, sorry. Our 
Our fourth SAC Student Athlete Spotlight features the most likely to be ID'd when they're 30. <laughs> Women's golf, head coach Cindy Ho in her 15th season and assistant coach David Bowden. Seahawks have faced 31 top 25 teams this season and have posted two top five and four top 10 finishes. Head to head, UNCW is 2-0 versus LSU and has wins over Kentucky, Ole Miss, Kansas, and Tulane. Two weeks ago, the Seahawks defeated defending national champion Washington by one stroke. Junior Liberty Anderson leads the team with a 75.11 stroke average, the eighth lowest in school history. Anderson was named CAA Women's Golfer of the Week on October 19th and recorded a hole-in-one during the second round of the LSU Tiger Classic on March 24th. Freshman Tao Mi Win was named as the CAA Co-Golfer of the Week on March 15th at the Lee and the Seahawks at the River Landing Classic. The team features a stroke average of 303.59, the lowest in program history, and looks to capture its fifth CAA championship this weekend in Williamsburg, Virginia. Women's golf team will present its awards at a later date. Good luck this weekend. <laughs> Men's golf, head coach Matt Clark in his ninth season, and assistant coach Daniel Bowden. The Seahawks, behind third place finisher Thomas Eldridge, captured first place in the Tar Hill Intercollegiate at Finley Golf Course in Chapel Hill. Junior Patrick Cover took second out of 93 players in the ODU OBX Intercollegiate at the Kilmerick Golf Club in Powell's Point, North Carolina. Eldridge was invited to play in the Patriot All-America Invi Invitational where he represented fallen soldier Captain Christopher Cash in Litchfield, Arizona in January. In early March, Eldridge carded a third round four under par 68 to win a Tiger Invitational by three strokes. Cover shot a career-low 65 yesterday to win medalist honors in the Clemson Invitational for his second collegiate victory. The 65 was also a tournament and course record at Clemson. <laughs> like the women, the men's golf team will present its awards at a later date. <laughs> Our fifth SAC student athlete spotlight features the most likely to be a model. I really, I really thought, Eric, that Tom Reardon had a ch chance at this one. I really did. It's my one Tom Reardon joke. He's not here tonight. Women's tennis, Hans Olsen in his second season, and John Weir, assistant coach. The team carries an 8-6 and six record into Wednesday's Senior Day match versus NC Central at the UNCW courts. Junior Madera Strame has compiled a sterling 12-2 and two record and number one singles this spring. The team stands six and four at home. Junior Zandra Fogner owns a five match winning streak. Seahawks have just two matches remaining in the regular season before the CA championships begin on April 20th at Elon and the women's tennis team will present its awards at a later date. <laughs> Our six SAC student athlete spotlight features the best look alike. Men's tennis. Sorry, Nick. Head coach Mate Dubois in his 10th season. Assistant coaches Alex Weatherall and Taylor Vaughn. Men's tennis team stands 10 and 7 after a pair of matches last weekend in Johnson City, Tennessee. The team has matches versus UNC Greensboro and Old Dominion before the CA Championships on April 20th at Elon. Freshman Ignazi Dorita leads the Seahawks with a 10 and 4 singles record. Dorita and sophomore Augustin Savarino were named CA Doubles Team of the Week last week. The Seahawks have faced five nationally ranked opponents this spring and defeated VCU and Michigan State. The men's tennis team will present its awards at a later date.
Women's cross country, head coach Lane Schwer in his second season. The United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association honor the women's cross country team as an all academic team. The women's cross country team finished first in two races during the season, winning the Campbell Invitational on September 4th and Delaware's Blue and Gold Invitational on October 8th. Junior Carly Smeraglia raced to a first place finish in the Blue and Gold Invitational on October 8th in Newark, Delaware and was named CAA Runner of the Week following the first place finish. Senior Sarah Goodnight was named to the CA's all academic team. And junior Sarah Hammond was selected by USA Track and Field to represent the United States at the 32nd World Mountain Running Championships in September in Bulgaria. And the following award winners, please come forward. Most valuable runner, Sarah Hammond. Team Leadership Award, Carly Smeraglia. And also the Team Leadership Award, Sarah Goodnight. Congratulations. Before we get to men's cross country, our seventh SAC student athlete spotlight features most inseparable girls. Men's cross country. Again, Lane Schwer, head coach in his second season. The United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association honor the men's cross country team as an all academic team. The men finished first in Delaware's Blue and Gold Invitational on October 8th. Alex Bozeman captured first place in the Blue and Gold Invitational on October 8th in Newark, Delaware and earned all CAA honors and was selected to the league's all academic team. Bozeman finished 12th at the CAA championships to earn all CAA honors for the second straight season. Most valuable runner, Alex Bozeman. <laughs> Team Leadership Award, Calvin Daughtry. Congratulations. <laughs> Women's track and field. Head coach Lane Schwer in his second season, assistant coaches Donald Thomas and Alex Carradine. The women's team has competed in five of seven meets on its spring schedule for 2017. Sarah Hammond won the 5,000 meters at the Seahawk Invitational. Ramira Mays won the 100 hurdles at the Seahawk Invitational. The women's track and field team will present its awards at a later date. Our eighth SAC student athlete spotlight features the biggest bromance. <laughs> Men's track and field. Head coach Lane Schwer in his second season. Assistant coaches Donald Thomas and Alex Carradine. Like the women, the, women's, uh, the men's track and field team has competed in five of seven meets on its spring schedule for 2017. Junior Dan Caffrey shattered the school record in the javelin as UNCW won the 12th annual <laughs> Battle at the Beaches meet against regional rival Coastal Carolina on March 4th. Ryan Fowler won the 400 meters and the 4x400 relay team of uh, Keandre Yeoman, Josh Cooper, Earl Green, and Ryan Fowler took first place in the Seahawk Invitational. Caffrey captured first place in the javelin at the Carolina Regionals, the Carolina Relays, and Yeoman captured first place in the 400 meter hurdles at the Carolina Relays as well. Like the women, the men's track and field team will present its honors at a later date. Yeah. 
softball. Head coach Christy Norton in her fifth season. Associate head coach Cam Tucker. Assistant coaches Brittany Robinson and Garrett Fernald. The Seahawks have posted a 28-7-1 record, marking their second consecutive 25-win season. UNCW set a program record by winning 10 consecutive games from March 18th to April 1st. Coach Christy Norton earned her 100th victory at UNCW on March 22nd when the Seahawks defeated Campbell 1-0 in 13 innings. Senior Peyton Jordan threw the fourth no-hitter in program history on March 25th against Drexel. Jordan earned CAA Pitcher of the Week honors for her efforts. Sophomore Rachel Willis and senior Merritt Wilkinson have each been named as the CAA's Player of the Week this season. Senior Lauren Moore is one of 30 candidates for the Senior Class Award. Moore and Wilkinson each recorded the 100th hit of their careers this season, along with Nella Shambly, who just got hers this past weekend. Seahawks are coming off their second CAA Series sweep of the season after taking three games on the road at Charleston. UNCW sits atop the CA standings with an 8 and 1 mark heading into this weekend's series at home against Hofstra. <laughs> and the softball team will present its awards following the conclusion of the season. Best of luck this weekend. Our ninth SAC student athlete spotlight features the most school spirited. Baseball, head coach Mark Scapp in his 26th season, associate head coach Randy Hood, assistant coaches Matt Williams and Robbie Monday, and student assistant coach Josh Stott. Seahawks are making their way through the season and will host the CAA tournament in late May at Brooks Field. Nick Fight and Casey Golden have each earned CAA Player of the Week honors. Sophomore catcher Ryan Jeffers slugged three home runs versus the College of Charleston on March 31st. Jeffers owns a five-game hitting streak. Led by Kennard McDowell's 6-for-10 performance at the plate, the Seahawks hit 321 in taking two of three games versus NC Central over the weekend. The baseball team will present its awards following the season as well. Our 10th SAC Student Athlete Spotlight features the most likely to have pride in their stride. sure what that means. <laughs> Must be a generational thing. I'm getting up there now. Uh, women's basketball head coach Adele Harris in her fifth season. Assistant coaches Kim Tingley, Richard Moore, Crystal Riley, and director of basketball operations Brittany Oliver. The Seahawks finished with an 11-20 record and reached the quarterfinals of the CA championship after defeating College of Charleston 49-44 in the first round. A trio of UNCW student athletes Senior guard Amber Reeves, redshirt junior forward Jenny DeGraff, and junior center Rebecca Banks earned spots on the CAA All-Academic Team. Reeves was also named as a participant for the WCA So You Want to Be a Coach program. Redshirt senior forward Jordan Henry was named as the CAA Co-Player of the Week on January 29th after leading the Seahawks to back-to-back -to -back wins over Townsend and College of Charleston. Reeves finished her career ranked fourth in school history by appearing in 123 career games, while her 84 career starts are tied for 13th place in the Seahawks annals. Redshirt senior guard Jasmine Steele ranks 17th in school history with 218 assists. Her 120 assists this season are the eighth most in a single season in program history. Will the following award winners please come forward? Gladiator Award, Jordan Henry. Most Improved Player, Madison Rocky. Most Valuable Player, Jasmine Steele. Congratulations. Men's basketball. The Seahawks went 29 and 6 overall and 18 and 3 in the CAA. The Seahawks had a combined 63 school records in 2016-17, and 
including 43 new team records and 20 individual standards. UNCW won its third consecutive regular season championship and went back to back in the CA tournament. Senior guard Chris Flemings and sophomore guard CJ Bryce earned first team all CAA honors. Senior guard Denzel Ingram was voted second team all CAA and sophomore forward Devontae Kaycock collected third team accolades. Kaycock became only the second Seahawk to be named CAA Defensive Player of the Year. Graduate guard Ambrose Mosley was selected to the CAA's all academic team. Bryce became the school's all time leading sophomore scorer with 608 points, while Kaycock led all NCAA Division I players by connecting on 80% of his field goals, eclipsing the longtime mark of 74.6% set by Oregon State's Steve Johnson during the 1980-81 season. Kaycock also set a new school record for rebounds in a game and tied the CAA mark with 24 caroms versus Drexel on January 21st. UNCW tied the CA record for most three-pointers in a game by draining 21 of 32 triples versus Delaware on February 3rd. The team set a CA record by winning 11 non-conference games and tied the CA record by winning their sixth conference championship, matching the mark held by former member Old Dominion. And the following, please come forward. The coaches Award, Ambrose Mosley. Most Improved Player Award, Devontae Kaycock. <laughs> Offensive Player of the Year Award, C.J. Bryce. <laughs> Most Valuable Player Award, Denzel Ingram. <laughs> Men's Basketball. Spirit Groups and head coach Shana Doty, the dance team of the cheerleaders spend many hours of practice and preparation to help enhance the overall spirit in UNCW athletic events throughout the year. We appreciate their dedication and hard work for the Seahawks. Will the following award winners please come forward? Coach's Award of Excellence for Cheerleading, Susanna Haas. Also, the Coach's Award of Excellence for Cheerleading, Brandon Bolin. <laughs> Coach's Award of Excellence for the Dance Team, Cameron Fuller. <laughs> and also, Coach's Award of Excellence for the Dance Team, Clark Smith. Congratulations. It's time now to recognize the student athletic trainers who have worked under the direction of Director of Athletic Training Services, Scott Hill, and athletic trainers, Julie Francis, Stacy Downer, Danielle Canalesa, Catherine Linhart, Zach Michaud, Vilja Bishop, Matt Parker, and Drew Moore this year. Scott Hill will be making tonight's presentations. Each year, the staff names an outstanding student athletic trainer. The James D. Hundley Most Outstanding Student Athletic Trainer Award is named for Dr. James D. Hundley in recognition of his 22 years of service to the athletic training program in the athletic department. The James D. Hundley Most Outstanding Student Athletic Trainer Award goes to Katie Rogers. Katie is from Chapel Hill, but has lived in nine states. Katie has worked with swimming and diving, baseball, track and field, volleyball, during her time here at UNCW. She has completed internships with the Carolina Panthers, USA Baseball, and USA Soccer. Katie will be a graduate assistant at Michigan State in the fall. In 1995, the Wilmington Orthopedic Group, now Emerge Ortho, presented the first recipient of the Terry L. Wandsworth Award for Student Trainer Leadership. 
Terry, UNCW's longtime athletic trainer and friend, passed away in 1996. This year's award winner is Adam Foster. Adam hails from Eden, North Carolina. Adam has worked with the UNCW baseball, softball, and men's basketball teams. He's also had an, held an internship with UNC baseball. Adam will be a graduate assistant at Clemson in the fall. Congratulations. Before we move on to the special awards of the night, let's take a special look at five Seahawks and how they balance the demands of being a student athlete. I started playing when I was five, and it's just something that my brothers did, and I was just always in the gym, so my dad used to just roll the ball to me, and I, I just started finally playing, and he was always my coach, and I just, I love competing, like anything that's gonna challenge me, I wanna be able to put myself into it, because I always believe that challenges make you stronger. In both training and in school, there's this element of giving it your all, but also investing your time wisely, so I only run for maybe an hour a day on most days. At most, I run two hours in a day, so you have to really be bringing your A game in those two hours, and that's the same with school, so I think the biggest crossover is just being efficient, being effective, and giving like each moment my all and making sure that I'm actually present, willing to be there and getting everything done. I want to play professional, of course, but uh, if that doesn't work out, I want to do something in accounting or financing. I would probably say my favorite class and my hardest class is my calc class right now. And my professor, Mr. Parker, he, he really pushes me in doing my work. And not even that, but just getting it right, like spending extra time doing my homework and understanding the formulas that she has for me, and that's probably my favorite professor. UNCW just felt like home to me. I stepped on campus my junior year in high school with a visit with my dad, and everyone was just so nice and so sweet. It just felt like home. I know that I have to get my work done ahead of schedule because we have softball, you know, we're waking up at 5 a.m. and traveling and all, so it's really best to get your schoolwork done early. I spend a lot of time at the library, get a lot of things done there. Sometimes I'll stay there super late, but it's more about finding the time to do your work. If you come in and say, okay, you know, this is what I want to do. Um, I want to make sure that I do well academically. I want to make sure that I do well athletically. It's, it's all, all it takes is hard work, and you have to be mentally ready. Without organization and time management, you're all over the place, and you don't have stuff done when it needs to be done. You got to have that equal leverage on school and whatever sport you play in. A lot of student athletes have to deal with that, of course. I think baseball really helps me stay on top of my schoolwork because I have no choice but to get it done. As a student athlete, the student comes first. Everyone tells you that, but it's really true. If you don't have the grades, you're not going to play. And you know, we all want to play, so you got to get the grades. Pretty team-oriented person. I really enjoy the aspect of you know being a part of a team and being with my teammates and doing what my job is for my teammates and having just seeing the success that we can all have, knowing that I did my part is one of the best feelings you can ever feel. We're one big happy family. Ever since freshman year, you know, we're close knit. Our seniors leave, we cry. We get new seniors, they leave, we cry. <laughs> we're like sisters. When I came in, we had 19 girls, and I had 18 other sisters and uh, friends that I could go to about anything. We study together. It's just one big family, and it's great. When I was a junior in high school, I tore my ACL, and just being around physical therapy and all that made me really interested in the human body. So when I first got here, I did exercise science. But then I wanted to be more in depth with it, so I decided to go the biology route so that I can either go to medical school or go to PA school and be more involved with fixing the knee instead of like rehabbing it. Last year, I got to act in an all regional because it kind of puts together success on the field and success in the classroom, so that was pretty cool. We get recognized for having consecutive semesters with a 3.0 or higher as a student athlete, and I've gotten that every semester, so that's been good. You gotta put your schoolwork at the forefront. Just being able to understand that, that you gotta get it done, but then also have fun and, and enjoy it too, because it's supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun, then there's no point in doing it, so be a student first and then enjoy the actual part of it. I like how the classes are challenging. They really test you, and the professors are really there to help you, and I like the connection I have with my teachers. Like, if I need help, I can go to them. That's something I really like. 
student athletes are very big to the community and they understand that and they know you wherever you go so it helps you try to be you know the best person you are when you go out into the community and I love doing community service with the kids and things like that just staying involved and I feel like UNCW is just a, a beautiful place to be just feel like they're always looking out for us as student athletes. Academically last year I received the New Hand River Henry County Medical Society scholarship it's given to one rising senior who's pursuing a medical degree or going to medical school. And last year also on the softball team, I received all academic team for the conference. So I'm super proud of that. I'd say the number one thing that I'm looking forward to is my honors thesis. I'm doing that in the virology lab. That'll probably be my main accomplishment. That's been the one thing that has been so important to me in undergrad. I've done impressive things along the way, but I think it's really the end result that I'm really looking forward to, especially in cross country and track. I've had some great PRs, I've won races, and in terms of accomplishments, I'm on the USA team, so <laughs> I have all these different things going for me, but I'm still looking forward to where I'm headed, and it's definitely not over. I really wanna be all conference this year, maybe take a school record or two if I can, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Great job. Not everybody's looking forward to do a thesis, but great job out there. We'll now begin the special awards portion of the program. Jimmy Bass will get this part of the program started. Thank you and good evening. Um, the William J. Brooks Distinguished Service Award was established in 1991 to recognize individuals who have contributed their time and many, many talents to the betterment of the entire athletic program here at UNCW. And this year's recipient certainly belongs at the top of that uh, historic list. Tonight's honoree has been a loyal supporter of the Seahawks for nearly three decades. She served on numerous boards around campus, including the Seahawk Club, the UNCW Foundation, Board of Visitors, he and his lovely wife, Debbie, have established an endowed scholarship to support UNCW student athletes also. More recently, he and Debbie have helped to initiate and create the Shotmakers group of donors which supports the men's basketball program. If Bill Rudis will please come to the podium to accept this prestigious honor. Next up are the Chancellor's Cup Awards. I'd like to ask Provost Marilyn Sheridan to please come to the podium for the presentations of these prestigious awards. Good evening. It's my pleasure to present these awards on behalf of our Chancellor. Chancellor Sardarelli is in Brazil. Uh, getting ready to um, celebrate the upcoming holidays. So he sends his greetings from his country. The Chancellor's Cup Award is presented annually to one male and one female student athlete who has best represented UNCW in the classroom and in the athletic arena. Each honoree must be a graduating senior with a minimum grade point average of 3.0 who has also excelled in his or her sport during the year. Tonight's first recipient has fashioned a roadmap for student athletes who want to achieve the penultimate balance between academics and athletics. As a four-year letter winner for the UNCW softball team, she has started 140 of 148 games during her career and racked up 79 hits, including 12 doubles, one triple, and four home runs. This season, she has helped the Seahawks compile a 28-7-1 overall record and an 8-1 mark in the CAA. This Farmville, North Carolina product has compiled these impressive statistics while excelling in the classroom. A biology major with a minor in neuroscience, she owns an exemplary 3.95 grade point average, and has been a dean's list student every semester 
since arriving in the fall of 2013. On top of these accomplishments, she has been heavily involved in the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, becoming the first individual to serve as president in successive years. A dedicated student who has also served the community in many ways over the last four years, this young woman lives, leaves quite a legacy here at UNCW. Lauren Moore, please come forward. Our second Chancellor's Cup honoree has also carved out an outstanding academic and athletic career over the last four seasons. A resident of Raleigh, he has compiled a 3.63 grade point average in accounting and collected an array of academic honors. They include being recognized on the Dean's List, earning the CAA Commissioner's Award, and earning Academic East Region honors from the American Baseball Coaches Association. On the baseball diamond, he has started 175 games in four years and collected all CAA and all East Region accolades last year. In addition to excelling in the classroom and on the diamond, he has been a great teammate and a catalyst for, for Coach Mark Scaff's club. Would Robbie Thorburn please come to the podium? And now for the Thomas V. Mosley Awards, once again, Jimmy Bass to make these presentations. The Thomas V. Mosley Award is presented each year to the program's outstanding male and female student athletes. It is given in memory of Dr. Thomas V. Mosley, a member of the UNCW faculty and the Seahawk Club Board of Directors for many, many years. Dr. Mosley was a member of the university community who gave unselfishly of his time and energies toward the advancement of Seahawk athletics, the Seahawk club, and the university during its early years. The award is presented to individuals who distinguish themselves in athletic competition during the year. It is based on outstanding athletic performances and accomplishments and the generation of positive attention and recognition to their respective sport the University and the Colonial Athletic Association. Tonight's first recipient of the Thomas V. Mosley Award becomes the first student athlete in her sport to receive this outstanding honor. A senior from Waxhaw, North Carolina, she's a four-time letter winner and two-time All-CA selection on the softball diamond. She recorded the most victories by a pitcher since 2006 last season and has picked up where she left off this spring. She owns a 13-2 record this year with an outstanding 1.13 earned run average and hurled the fifth no-hitter in school history with a 3-0 victory over Drexel on March 25th at Bozeman Field. This young woman has been named CA Pitcher of the Week twice during her career and ranks third all-time in career wins at UNCW. She is 5-0 in her last six starts with a 1-1-7 ERA. Peyton Jordan. Please come to the podium to be honored as UNCW's outstanding female student athlete.
tonight's second honoree also likes diamonds, so to speak. A junior on the baseball team, he picked up a host of preseason honors and has lived up to the billing, batting 294 with 15 extra base hits, including nine home runs and 25 runs batted in. He was named the CAA Baseball Player of the Year in 2016 and was selected to five All-American teams as the Seahawks won the regular season title and advanced to the NCAA Regionals. This year he was tabbed as the league's preseason player of the year and voted to four All-American units. He is tied for first in the CAA in home runs, ranks fourth in the league in total bases, and has 10 multi-hit games this spring. He becomes the third baseball player to collect this award, joining all-time greats Battle Holly in 94 and Daniel Hargrave in 2008. Nick Fike, please come to the podium to be honored as UNCW's Outstanding Male Student Athlete. We'll now present the Soaring Seahawk Awards, and uh, to do that, we welcome uh, Deputy Athletic Director Adrian Sweeney to make this presentation. Good evening. Tonight marks the 10th year of the Soaring Seahawk Award given here at UNCW. This award is presented annually to individuals who have been an exemplary representative of UNCW student athletes. The recipients display a consistent commitment to his or her team and exhibits good sportsmanship and conduct while attracting local, regional, and or national attention. Tonight's first recipient of the Soaring Seahawk Award will be making her second trip to the podium, and she is very deserving of this award. You have already heard of her miraculous return from open heart surgery to return to be, become one of the CAA's top swimmers in her sport and on her team. Catherine Ostrom exemplified the true spirit of this award with her positive energy and commitment to the sport and her team. She also inspired her coaches, us as an administrators, us as administrators that you can come back from anything and nothing is impossible. Please come up to receive the Soaring Seahawk Award. Catherine Ostrom, you inspire us all. Our second recipient of the Soaring Seahawk Award racked up a host of honors this season for the men's soccer team. This young man also missed the entire 2015 season with an illness. He and I actually were at the hospital together for what we thought was something as simple as a stomach bug and it turned out to be a five week stay in the hospital and turn into a surgery. Like Catherine, he overcame tremendous odds to become an outstanding contributor for Coach Aiden Heaney's team while compiling an outstanding 3.5 GPA in business. He collected National Player of the Week honors during the course of the season and wound up first team CAA, all CAA. Please join me in congratulating our second recipient, Junior Julio Moncada of the men's soccer team.
And now for the final award of the night, the Team Leadership Award. I'd like to call on Dr. James DeVita of the Athletic Council to assist with this presentation. Thank you. For the 17th year, the Department of Athletics presents the Team Leadership Award to recognize a team that demonstrates excellent leadership skills through community service, charitable, and educational events. A permanent plaque is displayed as a tribute to the contributions of the team. This year's recipient of the Team Leadership Award has put together a historic season while compiling an impressive record of community service. With an overall team GPA of 3.4 and a 28-7-1 record after last weekend, tonight's honorees has, have obviously balanced, learned how to balance academics and athletics. The team has been involved in numerous community service projects, including Campus Move-In, the CAA Bud Blood Drive, Optimist Softball, Miracle League, and Be the Match, to name a few. Overall, they have totaled nearly 1,700 hours of community service this season. Please join me in congratulating the recipients of this year's Team Leadership Award for the fifth time, and I think they can add it to their shelves of awards tonight, the softball team. An annual tradition of the banquet is a selection of an individual to speak on behalf of the senior class. Our speaker this year is Jordan Rivenbart, member of the cross country and track teams. Jordan hails from Hillsboro, North Carolina. also very excited. Um, it's absolutely crazy. They tell you that four years are going to go by fast. But you don't really believe them until you're a senior looking at your cap and gown and thinking, how in the world did I get here? You think back on your first practice or team meeting with a room full of strangers who know nothing about you and you know nothing about them. You spend countless hours with these people at practice, on the road, and in hotel rooms. You learn not only about each person as an athlete, but as a new family member. You learn what they've been through, what they're going through, and how to capture the perfect snapshot of them in their most awkward moments and send it to your entire team. And when one of your teammates gets injured, hurt, or even just insulted, that person better be prepared to have 10 other people come in after them. Dinners and late hotel room gatherings become places where you can listen and laugh at all the stories of your team, of the team you are now a part of. You learn about the crazy stuff that they did or happened over the years and how they did or did not get away with it. You listen to how your team struggled to sustain itself. And now, they're strong and making steps to becoming bigger and better. You go from only being able to listen to these crazy stories to the one telling the tale. You as a person have grown. You were once that little freshman, clueless, whether you acted like it or not. And now you're that proud senior, the team mom or dad, captain, school record holder, CAA champion. These are the moments that we treasure. These are the moments we look back on and smile. But what makes us different from being part of Greek life or just a club team or just a tight-knit group of nuts? <laughs> Someone put it into perfect words. It's a deep need in us 
that come from the heart. We need to practice, play, lift, to hustle, to sweat, to compete. We do it all for our teammates. We don't lift weights with a future Olympic star. We lift weights with a future doctor and CEO or physical therapist. Sometimes we play for 2,000 fans. Sometimes it's just 25. But we still play hard. You cheer for us because you know us. You know more than just our name. We are students first. We don't sign autographs. We sign student cover petitions, class agreements, and grad school applications. When we miss a kick or strike out or just shy of hitting our goal, we don't let down an entire state. We only let down our teammates, coaches, and fans. But the hurt in our heart is still the same. We train hard. Lift, throw, kick, shoot, dribble, swim, and then lift some more. And in the morning, we go to class and do it all over again. And yet we are still students first. It's about the passion for the game. It's about our pride in ourselves, in our school. It's about our love and passion for the game. And when it's all over, and we walk off the court or field or track, for the very last time, our hearts pump up. Those tears are real, but deep down inside, we are very proud. We will forever be what you can call ourselves, UNCW School of Athletes. Now, before I go off the stage, um, there's a few people I want to thank. I want to thank Coach Shear for believing in me when not a lot of people didn't, including myself, especially after I bombed almost every time trial the first year I came out except for one. Um, I want to thank Adolfo for making me stronger and always keeping up with my stats. Coach Chalmers for making my day just a little brighter, and Coach Paradigm for his mind-blowing speeches. <laughs> I want to thank my teammates for always being there for me and having my back during times of loss and in success, for circling the track and screaming me to run faster even when my legs are screaming at me something completely opposite. I want to thank my mom and my dad for supporting me and always making me feel proud and accomplished. I, without them, I wouldn't be the woman I am today. I want to most thank God for blessing me with this school, with this athletic department, with my team, and the God-given talents to run and coach with all day. Thank you. Great job, Jordan. That's the end of our program tonight. Again, congratulations to all of our winners and all the teams, and best of luck for those of you still competing. Have a great night, everybody.